Hello everyone, in this video I will teach you how to replace a sky in a picture using Photoshop, covering everything in around 5 minutes. Sky replacements are great for when conditions aren't the best when you're out in the field and you want to salvage a photo by adding a sky from a different time and place. Many editing softwares are being released with sky replacing tools including Adobe Photoshop, which is extremely easy to use. To replace the sky in a photo, you will need a foreground and a sky, and preferably those will be either RAW or TIFF files. Make sure that your sky file includes only sky, no foreground, so crop out any unwanted subjects. Also, it helps if your horizon line is straightened, and the effect works best for a photo with a well-defined edge between the foreground and the sky. Now, let's create our sky replacement. First, launch Photoshop and open your foreground file, then navigate to the Edit menu and select Sky Replacement. From the Sky drop-down menu, click the plus surrounded by a square and import your sky. Right off the bat, you're probably not going to get a good sky replacement, and if you notice some of your original sky is still showing through the new sky, increase the Shift Edge slider. You can also physically move the new sky around, which can also help. I usually don't touch any of the other sliders since I like to do touch-up work in Lightroom after I do the initial replacement in Photoshop. Once you have a result that is good enough, click OK. You will get a ton of new layers and masks on the right that allow you to further manipulate the sky replacement. What I like to do is examine the new sky mask and look for any gray areas that should be white. In Layer Masks, black represents the part where the image doesn't show through, while white is where the image is shown. Here, I'm noticing some areas that really should be masked out, so I'm going to paint them white. I'm also noticing that the foreground is not completely black in all areas, which means that the sky is showing through, so I'll paint those in as well. Besides the sky mask, you also have masks for foreground lighting, sky brightness, and foreground color, but I'm not going to mess with those right now. The last step in Photoshop is to touch up any areas near the horizon that look strange, like if you had a complex edge with tree branches, you may need to mask out your original foreground on a pixel by pixel level to get it looking natural. Remember that the whole point with the sky replacement is to make it look as natural as possible, so this blend between the new sky and the old foreground is really important to get perfect. Once you have a result that you're happy with, export the new combined image as a TIFF and take it into Lightroom. In Lightroom is where we will take the sky replacement and add the correct lighting, shading, and coloring. For this particular case, since I did a Milky Way sky replacement, I'm going to darken down the foreground quite a bit and lower some of the contrast. I like to do all these adjustments with brushes so that I can pinpoint what parts of the image will be affected. I also want the girl to become a focal point of the image, so I'll lighten her up a little bit, and one trick I like to do with Milky Way sky replacements is increase the exposure and highlights right near the horizon so that the edge is a little bit more faded. The less attention we draw to that horizon, the less people will be thinking about whether it is a sky replacement or not. After these adjustments in Lightroom, I'll export the photo as a TIFF and a JPEG and call it good. Making a sky replacement is fairly easy with Photoshop, and thankfully in the recent versions, all it takes is a few clicks. The hard part is making it look realistic, and that's something you will have to tackle yourself. I like to make a lot of Milky Way composites, and the foreground lighting is essential to get right in order for the image to look realistic, and I plan on making more guides on this since composites can be a powerful tool in astrophotography. If you liked this video, give it a like and subscribe for more. I have a lot more content coming to this channel, and I'm really excited to share it with you all. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much for watching this Apple photography video. If you would like to support the channel, the best way is through subscribing with notifications so that you don't miss any new content. Feel free to rate and share the video, and if you have any feedback, I will try my hardest to respond to your comments and incorporate any suggestions into future videos. If you prefer to read my content instead of watching it, or want to view other helpful articles, tutorials, and learn more about Apple Apps, then visit my new website, appleapps.org. To follow me on my photography adventures, Visit my Instagram page at Vincent Ledvina and also my print store. Finally, consider joining my Patreon for one on one support and extra content. Check out my Buy Me a Coffee page. Visit my merch store to buy clothing with unique Apple App style designs. And as always, PayPal donations are an option. All these resources will be linked in the description. With that, thank you for watching and I hope all of you have a great day.